Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're gonna go over 10 problems on the AFOQT, that is the Air Force Officer Qualifying Test. These are math knowledge problems. I got a few tips and tricks to go over that. Hopefully I'll help you do better on that exam. Make sure you have a notebook in front of you, pause the video, do the problems before I do them, and then see how I do them afterwards. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Problem number one, the reciprocal of six and two fifths. Well, this is a mixed number, um, so there are two steps here. So step one is to convert it into a fraction, and then step two is to find the reciprocal. The way I convert that into a fraction instead of a mixed number is I take that six, multiply it by that five to get 30, add the numerator to get 32 fifths. So I have 32 fifths. That is the equivalent of six and two fifths. Then I reciprocate it, which means turn it over. So that goes up there, that down here to give me five 30 seconds, and that's gonna be answer D right here. Number two, what is the value equal of radical 12 plus radical 27? Well, I look at my answers and I can see there are no decimal approximations, meaning I have to simplify and leave an exact value answer. So these are all root threes in the radical, so that's where I'm trying to go. So in these square roots, I try and figure out the factors of 12 so I could find a pair. So factors of 12 are a 4 and a 3. Still no pair in there. 4 is a pair of 2s and a 3. So I could get 12 with a 2 times 2 times 3. And then for every pair, 1 comes out. So I have 2 on the outside of that square root. That 3, there's no pair for it, so it stays on the end side. So this is 2 root 3. Root 27 is a 9 and a 3. 9 is a pair of 3s. So for every pair, one comes out. So in this radical, 27 is going to be equal to 3 root 3. So the root 12 is 2 root 3. The root 27 is 3 root 3. I'm adding these two things together. I'm saying I got 2 root 3s plus another 3 of these things. So I have a total of 5 root three, there's my answer, answer C. A lot of these problems have two steps. First to simplify and then combine, so there are two separate skills here. Number three, kind of like a radical, but it's saying what is the cube root of 0.125? So that is saying the cube root of 0.125. So a square root is saying what times itself, right, and go backwards, so the square root of 25 is five, which is saying five, times five is 25. The cube root of 125 is also five, because you're saying five times five, 25, times another five, 125. So this is saying what times itself, times itself is equal to 0.125. It's kind of hard to do, it's hard to see. I look at my answers, they're all fractional. If you see 0.125 is an eighth, then this is a lot easier. So I could see this is one eighth, I can split that into two square roots, the square root of one over the square root of eight. I'm sorry, the cube root, right? It's a three from that cube. Cube root, cube root, cube root. Well, one times one times one is one. So the numerator here is one. Two times two, four times two, eight. This is a half. And my correct answer is B right here. If you're not able to see that it is one eighth, you could also try it as the cube root of 125 over 1,000. And then as you see it like that, 5 times 5 times 5, 125, right? And then 10 times 10, 100 times 10, 1,000, you get 5 tenths. And then that would reduce to a half. Number four, if P is equal to a third and Q is equal to 8 ninths, which is equal to this divided by this. Again, we got a few different problems really here. First thing is we have substitution, so we gotta take this value and plug it in for P, this value, plug it in for Q, then we have fractions inside fractions, so we gotta figure that out. And once we do all of that, then we have to do that division sign. So the rule for dividing fractions is multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you have a half divided by a third, you turn that to multiplication and flip this over. So one half times three over one. So that's gonna give you three halves. 
right, or one and a half. So that's the rule for division. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take that one third for p and plug it in here. So I have two divided by one third, right? What I'm saying right here, this is just the first term, two divided by one third, which is saying two times three over one, right? Dividing fractions, same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I take that one third, I plug it in here, and that this thing right here works out to be equal to six. So this thing's a six, okay? Then the next part of the problem is this thing right here, q divided by four. q is eight ninths divided by four. So what I'm saying here is eight ninths divided by four. What I'm saying here is eight ninths times one over four. Four goes into here one time, into here twice. Multiply across the top to get two, across the bottom to get nine. So I've done my substitution. I plugged it in. I got rid of the fractions in the fraction. That first term is six. Then I'm going to have that six divided by this two ninths right here, right? The second term, which is going to be six times nine over two. Six times nine is 54. 54 divided by two is 27. And that's my answer right there. So we've got a lot of steps on here to get us to answer D. Uh, before I get started on number five, uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. If you have any questions on this video, um, please post them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. If you like the Colfax math um, shirt, you could get these in the link. I got a ton of tests. I got them kind of organized in playlists, um, practice tests for you to get better. The way you get good at standardized math tests is you do a lot of practice of standardized math tests. Um, that's the only way to get better. Learn some of the tips and tricks. The more you do them, the more you'll pick up these tips and tricks. Okay, number five, A is equal to three. I take that three and I plug it in for A. We got another substitution. B is equal to five. I plug that in for B. I gotta do that again over here. Plug that in for A, and I gotta plug that in for B. So I have to do all those substitutions first. Second part of problems can be order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction from left to right. So let's do that substitution first. A times B, three times five is 15, right? There's my AB over 15, plus A, which is three, times six plus seven times B, and B is five. So seven times five is 35. Now that I've done my substitution, I gotta do a little bit of simplification. The first step is parentheses. So I'm gonna have three times 41. And then I'm gonna reduce that fraction. 15 over 15 is one. I do not add until I multiply, right? Multiplication comes first. So this is 123. Right, 123 plus one will give me 124. Answer A. Number six, subtract this from five X plus two I. So what I'm saying here is I take five X plus two I minus the whole quantity, two Y plus three X minus four Z. As I look at this, I can see the, the question I'm really being asked is, do you know to distribute that negative through the whole quantity? The second question being asked is, do you know how to combine similar terms and do not combine dissimilar terms? If I could only combine my x's, my y's, my z's. So I have 5x minus 3x. That's going to give me a 2x. So I got that and that taken care of. Remembering to distribute that negative through the whole quantity. 2y minus 2y is 0, so that's canceling. Then I have negative, negative 4z, which is positive 4z. That is the correct answer right there. Um, this answer is the right one, just typo not to include the 4z there. Number 7, expand this. Actually, that's a typo as well. It's supposed to be expand. The trick on this one, this is not 3x squared minus 5 squared. I don't just distribute that square through the quantity. What that thing is saying right there is 3x 
minus five quantity squared, so three x minus five times the quantity three x minus five. Right, that whole thing is times itself. Thing about this is you gotta foil it out, F-O-I-L, and that stands for multiplying the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms. So let's do that, let's multiply the first terms together. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. The outer term is 3x minus 5, negative 15x. The inner term, same thing, minus 5 times 3x minus 15x. And then the last terms right here are negative 5 and negative 5, 25. So now I foiled it out, I expanded it. Next thing I do is I combine similar terms. There's 9x squared minus 15x minus 15x minus 30x plus 25. And I can see it's answer C right here. Number eight, factorize completely um, this right here. So factorizing is the, exact, is the opposite of expanding. I see in this first set of terms here, there's a common term of x. So just right there, I'm going to pull that x out, leaving me with a z minus 5. Right here, I have a common term of y, so I'm going to pull that y out. Pull y out of that, leaving me with a z. Pull y out of that, negative 5. So I pulled out common terms, I'm left with this. I don't actually see that over there, so I'm going to keep going. Now I see this right here, z minus 5 is common to this term and this term. So I'm going to pull out z minus 5 out front. It's a quantity. I pull it out of this thing, I'm left with an x. I pull it out of this thing, I'm left with a y. And then that's my answer, z minus 5 times x plus y. z minus 5 times x plus y. There it is right there, answer B. Number nine, express A in terms of U, V, and S in this equation. So what that thing's asking me is it's saying get A all by itself, right? So I gotta get A by itself. I'm actually isolating a variable, so I reverse my order operations. First thing I'm gonna do is subtract U squared from both sides. And then I'm gonna have right here V squared usually like a little tip on there that identifies me from u. v squared minus u squared, and that's gonna be equal u squared minus u squared. Those have canceled out to 2as. Right, what am I solving for? I'm solving for a, so I gotta get this a by itself. These operations are multiplication, so I get rid of those operations by division. I'm gonna divide both sides by 2s, this two and this two will cancel. That s and that s will cancel. I have a by itself. I have v squared minus u squared divided by 2s. Uh, there it is right there, answer d. Okay, number 10 right here. Before I even start, I'll point out there's a typo here. So these aren't the correct answers. Uh, but let's go ahead and work through our problems and not look at the multiple choice. A couple ways to do this, if it were a multiple choice, I could just kind of approximate what would be the best answer, take that value, plug it in, see if it works, then that's the correct answer. If it's not, I cross it out and go to the next one. That might be the most effective way to do a problem like this. Um, it's kind of through trial and error, and then chances are you're gonna get it in a couple of tries. But instead of doing it that way, I thought I'd do it the whole algebraic way just to show you that. So I'm gonna have x's times x's, which is gonna give me an x squared, a single x term, a single term. That's gonna give me a quadratic. I'm gonna take that quadratic, put it in a standard form, set equal to zero, factor and solve. The other way to do that is quadratic formula. So I did this before. I have a term times a term. I'm gonna foil that out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply my first terms together to get an x squared. My outer terms, two x, right, negative times negative, positive 2x, inner terms, 3x, so that's gonna give me a 5x, negative three and negative two, my last terms is plus six, and that's equal to negative four minus 2x. From there, I'm getting all my terms on the left side and setting it equal to zero. So I'm gonna add 2x to both sides, and I'm gonna add four to both sides. 
So here I have x squared plus nothing. That's going to give me x squared. 5x and 2x is 7x. 6 and 4 is 10. And then negative 4 and 4 is 0. Negative 2x and 2x is 0. So that's what I have right there. So I got my quadratic set equal to 0. Now I have to factor it. The only factors x squared are going to be an x and an x. Factors of 10 um, that are going to give me a 7. So I'm looking for numbers multiplied together to give me a 10, added together to give me a 7. So I have a 10 and a 1, no way to get a 7. I have a 5 and a 2. That'll work. Um, either they're both negative or both positive to give me a 10. If they were both negative, that would be a negative 7x, but they have to both be positive. So now that I've done that, now that I've done that, I have the zero sum property. I got this thing times this thing to equal zero, right? So what I'm saying is either x plus five can equal zero or x plus two can equal zero. So those are two separate things that could work, right? Because if this thing were zero, zero times anything is zero. It's called the zero sum property. Solving this equation right here, I have x equals negative five, subtracting five from both sides. Right here, subtract 2 from both sides, x is equal to negative 2. So if either one of those answers was up here, they would be the correct answer. And as I start a problem, the, none of those are right. So method here is correct. The correct answer is either a negative 5 or a negative 2. I can take those values, plug them back in, and check them out. All right, well, I sure hope uh, this video helped you, and hopefully you'll continue the study so you can do the best you can on the AFOQT, the Air Force Officer Qualifying Test. This is a standardized math exam. They're all pretty much the same. The more you study, the better you get at them, the better you get at looking at these tips and tricks, doing them more efficiently. All right, well, I appreciate you watching. And again, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you.